Hi, in this Big Data and Hadoop tutorial series presented by Coso IT, this video is focused on Uzi. In this lecture video, we will be talking about what is Uzi. We will see the Uzi workflows and a sample Uzi workflow. We will be talking about the Uzi functional components and how to make a workflow in Uzi. We will also do a hands-on exercise on running an Uzi job. So what is Uzi? Uzi is a scheduler system to manage Apache Hadoop jobs. So basically, Uzi simplifies workflow and coordination between jobs. For example, for performing certain tasks, one job may not be sufficient and you may want to run several jobs in a sequence and output from one job is fed to the other job as an input. So Uzi is needed to coordinate between these jobs and thus called a workflow engine. So workflow scheduler system to manage Hadoop jobs where workflow is a collection of actions. It is tightly integrated with Hadoop stack supporting various Hadoop jobs like Hive, Pig, Scoop as well as system specific jobs like Java and Shell. Uzi provides a mechanism to run the jobs at a given schedule and also reschedule jobs upon failure. So Uzi is a workflow coordination system that you can use to manage Hadoop jobs. It was originally designed at Yahoo for their complex search engine workflows, but now it's an open source Apache incubator project. Uzi also allows a user to create directed acyclic graphs of workflows and these can be run in parallel and sequence in Hadoop. So workflow in Uzi is defined in what is called a DAG or directed acyclic graph. Acyclic means that there are no loops in the graph or there is a starting point and ending point to the graph. A directed acyclic graph is made up of action nodes and the dependency nodes. Uzi is quite tightly integrated with Hadoop stack and it supports various Hadoop jobs like for high, pig, scoop as well as some system specific jobs like Java and Shell. So Uzi workflow consists of the action nodes and the control flow nodes. Action node can be a MapReduce job, a PIG application, a file system task or a Java application also. So control flow node will be the one which provides logic base between action nodes like start, end, and kill. So they execute actions based on the condition. Here we can see a sample Uzi workflow. It's a sequence of actions arranged in a directed acyclic graph. It always starts with a start node and ends with an end node. A fork is used to run multiple jobs in parallel like MapReduce streaming job, and the one is other is the pig job. When we use fork, there should be a join. We can also add decision tags to check if we want to run an action based on the output of the decision. So, Uzi functional components. Uzi workflow we know is it's supposed for defining and executing a control sequence of map use hive or pig jobs. Uzi coordinator. So coordinator applications allow users to schedule complex workflows. Uzi coordinator jobs can be scheduled to execute at a certain time, but after they are started, they can be configured to run at specific intervals also. So they provide a kind of scheduling. Uzi bundle. Uzi bundle system allows the user to define and execute a bunch of coordinator applications, often called a data pipeline. Let us now see how to make a workflow in Uzi. First make a Hadoop job and make sure that it works using the jar command in Hadoop. This ensures that the configuration is correct for your job. Then you can make a jar out of your classes. Then we need to define a workflow.xml file 
and copy all of the job configuration properties into the XML file. This should have the input files, output files, the input readers and writers, mappers and reducers, and the job specific arguments. We'll see a sample workflow.xml file in later in our slides. Also, you need to define a job.properties file, and this file defines the name node, job tracker, etc. It also gives you the location uh, where your, your shared jars and other files are present. So when you have these files ready, you need to copy them into HDFS and then you can run them from the command line. So sample job.properties file looks like this. You need to define the name node, your job tracker, queue name. You need to specify the directory where it is present and the libraries if you want to include any. Also, you need to define the application path here in your job.properties file. These are some of the nodes which are present in uh, the workflows. So how to define these nodes? The start node, it tells the application where to start. End node signals the end of OZ job. The error node signals that an error occurred and the message describing the error should be printed out. So you need to define these tags in the workflow.xml file. The error name tag will be given some message and will be closed with an error tag. Action nodes specify the map reduce pig or java class to run and all these nodes have ok and error tags. So ok means you can transition to the next node and error means that you have to go to the error node and should print an error message. So let us see this workflow.xml file. It should start, it should have a start node which is start2. Then you have to define the action node. Here we are going to define action for a Java main. So the action is Java. And here we need to define the job tracker and the name node configuration, the properties here. And then the main class from which we want, we have the jar file for Java. So the main class here is demo Java main, which has the uh, main method. And it is taking the arguments hello and uzi. It also has ok and error tags. Ok means ok you can go to end and error to fail. If it is failed then you need to print a message that java fail and giving the error message. So this is the workflow.xml file. After creating these files, you need to run the uzi job. For running the uzi job, you need to specify this command on command line and you need to give the configuration path of the job.properties file which is present in local file system and dash run parameter will make the uh, uzi job run. After running the uzi job, you can check the status of your workflow by giving the command uzi job info giving the status code of the job. Also, you can check the version in Uzi using Uzi admin command with the dash version parameter. Let us do a simple hands-on exercise on how to run Uzi job for Java main. Let's open up our cloud error and open up the terminal. Let us first check our Uzi is running or not. Uzi admin dash dash uzi http localhost status so this show system board normal. This shows that our Uzi is running. Now Cloudera has already provided with some bundle of examples for Uzi. So for this demo I'll be using those examples. You can uh, find that examples in user directory. So you can search it in 
uh, user directory giving the name uzi star examples So here in this directory you will see that uh, we have the jar for spark also and we have the jar file for practicing in uh, these examples in cdh uh, uzi examples dot tar dot gz so we have a tar file which has the examples now we need to create a directory demo and copy this tar file in that directory So I've already created a directory demo. Here you need to uh, give the copy command to copy the tar directory here. So I've already uh, copied it. So let us see. It's there. Uzi examples dot tar dot gz. Now we need to untar this file using the command tar xvzf and then giving the name of the tar file. After executing this command you will see that uh, your directory examples gets created and here we will see that in examples directory all these examples are present in the apps directory. These are the examples given already given to you by Cloudera. So here today we are going to do hands on on Java main. So let us see the workflow.xml file and the job.properties file present in Java main. So here we see we have one job.properties file, one workflow.xml and one lib directory. So lib directory contains the necessary jar files uh, required for the project and the workflow.xml and job.properties file we need to configure. So let us see what is there in our workflow.xml file. Here in this workflow.xml, we see that we have the start node, the action nodes, and also the nodes for OK and error. Also, we have defined the main class here, giving the demo Java main, which is the main class having the main method. And we are also providing the arguments because this Java class accepts the arguments. So this is the workflow.xml we have created for our project. Now let us see uh, what is present in the job.properties file. Here we need to configure the path of the name node. Also we need to configure the job tracker. For us we are using the uh, resource manager giving the port number as 8032. We need to define the queue name. Here we are taking the queue name as default. That is first in, first out. We are giving the root directory as examples. Here we are working in this directory. And also we need to give the application path. Here the application path is slash user cloudera in the examples root directory. In apps we have a directory called java main. So that is the application path given. Now we need to copy our examples directory into HDFS. So this needs after we have configured these files, then these files need to be present in HDFS. So you will be using Hadoop FS put command to put the examples directory in HDFS. Now after putting that in HDFS, let's uh, run our Uzi job.
उसी जॉब एच टी टी पी क्विक स्टार्ट डॉट क्लाउडरा पोर्ट नंबर इज इलेवन थाउजेंड फॉर उजी need to give the configuration file here is the job dot properties and it's present in the examples apps directory so we are already in apps directory we need to give java main it's present in java main directory and the name of the file is job dot properties and give the parameter run so this is our job id so our job has started running we can uh, check the status of our job using the info parameter here we can see the status of the job is running when we check again we see that this job has succeeded so this shows us the status that our job has completed also there are in our uh, input and output files that are present in examples directory so input file contains the sample data set to be used and output directory output location in hdfs where we need to store the output so these are the examples input data directory and output data directory that are present in hdfs so you can see your output in this directory and the input data is present in examples directory in hdfs itself so that's all about how to run an uzi job thanks a lot for watching our uzi tutorial and the next step please for more tutorials subscribe to our youtube channel and register for the in depth big data training on www.cosoid.com